Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing well. I am coming to you guys today with a fantastic episode. Maybe you are running VMware ESXi in your home lab environment with a VMUG subscription. Maybe you are managing VMware ESXi servers in your production data center. Well, I'm coming to you guys today with the top 10 VMware ESXi command line commands that you may not have heard about. And I assure you, you're going to want to know the commands that we highlight today. So grab your hot cup of coffee, hot cup of tea. Let's dive in to VMware ESXi top command line commands. Before we dive into the commands, today's video is sponsored by an awesome backup solution called BDR Suite by Vimboo. BDR Suite contains a wide range of features, functionalities, and capabilities that can protect workloads on premises such as VMware and Hyper-V, as well as cloud infrastructure such as Amazon EC2 instances or even cloud SaaS environments like Microsoft 365. Be sure to check out the solution at vimboo.com. It provides a cost-effective backup and recovery software solution, as you can see, that protects a wide range of technologies. And what's even better, you can download a fully functional trial version of the software with the possibility of even protecting 10 workloads for free forever. Many of the commands that we are going to cover today are part of the ESX CLI command and subcommands of the ESX CLI command line. If you want to see all of the available options, you can simply type the command ESX CLI dash dash help, and you will see all of the available options. So with that in mind, I want to cover with you guys several ESX CLI commands. However, we're going to also cover other command line commands that I have certainly found helpful. The first command we want to highlight is an ESX CLI command that allows us to easily discover all of the IP addresses that are configured for a particular ESXi host. That command is the following. It is ESX CLI network IP interface IPv4 get. And when you type that command and return the output, it will display all of the IP addresses, the VM kernel addresses that are assigned to this particular ESXi host. Now, this is extremely helpful. You can find IP address information from the vCenter GUI or the host client connected to an ESXi host. However, this displays all of the information in one list or one table view that you can easily check to troubleshoot to verify configuration to information gather. It's a great command to understand IP addressing information configured for your VMware ESXi host. The next command is closely related to the previous command that we just took a look at. It is the ESX CLI network IP interface list and it provides more details about those configured IP addresses. So let's execute this command and see what we get. When we return the output from the ESX CLI network IP interface list, we get additional information, including the MAC address. So if you're looking for a particular MAC in troubleshooting, do you want to check your ARP tables? If you're troubleshooting connectivity, this will display your MAC address associated with that VM kernel interface. You also can see the virtual switch that the the VM kernel address is associated with. You see the name of that port group. You can return the MTU value for that particular port group and VM kernel interface. And that is extremely helpful, especially if you're troubleshooting or verifying configuration for jumbo frame that is desirable for port groups and VM kernel addresses associated with services such as vMotion or vSAN to increase performance. So it's a great command to verify additional settings associated with those VM kernel IP addresses. The next command that we're going to look at is a netstat for ESXi. What is that command? ESX CLI network IP connection list. And if we execute this command, we get a very netstat like return. We can see from the return a local address, we get the foreign address connectivity, 
and the state of that connection. Very helpful if we are troubleshooting connectivity between an ESXi host and another box providing services or a box trying to connect to that ESXi, then you can use this command to have that very Netstat-like utility to verify connections. The next essential command for ESXi is the VMK ping command. This is one that you will find in many VMware KB articles if you're troubleshooting connectivity between VM kernel interfaces. VMK ping, make sure that you can source the ping from a VM kernel address. And that is extremely helpful if you're troubleshooting vMotion or vSAN or some other service that relies on specific connectivity, you can use VMK ping for that. VMK ping 192.168.0.3, and I'm essentially pinging the VM kernel address of an adjacent host in the environment. Let's say I want to ping from a particular VM kernel address. How do we do that? If I want to make sure that that ping originates from the VM kernel address that I specify, I can use the command VM VMK ping dash capital I VMK1, which is the specific VM kernel address that I want to ping from to this 192.168.0.3 address. And we can use that ping to verify connectivity and we know it originates from the VM kernel address that we want. You can also use this to verify jumbo frame connectivity. Issue the command VMK ping 10.1.149.116 the dash D dash S parameters allow us to pass in the frame size with the ping command. And let's see what happens. Let's see if we're configured for jumbo frames. It is failing. If we issue the smaller frame size, so dash D dash S 1472, the same ping is now successful. So we know that we can verify jumbo frame connectivity with this VMK ping command, which is extremely helpful. The next command is one of the most powerful commands in the ESXi operating system. And it's one that can be used for tremendous troubleshooting capabilities. And that is ESX Top. ESX Top is a suite of command line utilities that allow you to see everything from CPU, memory, storage, and networking, troubleshoot real-time metrics that you are gathering from your ESXi host. I am simply going to highlight one particular ESX top command that I have used over and over to troubleshoot network connectivity issues in particular to see exactly which physical interface a virtual machine is communicating on with port based round robin or failover with your ESXi host. It, when it powers on each virtual machine, it will place those virtual machines on a particular uplink associated with that port group. ESX Top with the network view allows you to see which physical interface that virtual machine is communicating on. So it's quite simply just ESX Top and we hit enter. However, as it launches, we're going to press the N key and this throws us into the network view. Now I want to highlight what we're seeing here. I have a virtual machine called test VM one running on this particular host that I have ESX top pulled up on. You can see easily which VM NIC this virtual machine is communicating on. Extremely helpful, especially if you are troubleshooting why you're seeing flaky connectivity from one set of VMs as opposed to other VMs that have no problem. You might find that you have a physical uplink, uplinking to a physical switch trunk that is not tagged for the correct VLANs. And this is a great way to start looking at some of those trends and troubleshooting. What if you have an ESXi host that is not responding from a management perspective? or you have a task perhaps coming from vCenter that is hung on a particular host. Other VMs on the same host may be operating okay. There is a built-in command that allows us to restart the management services of that ESXi host. That command is the services.sh restart command. And if we simply hit enter and allow this command to run, 
We're going to see on this particular VMware ESXi host, all of the management services will be stopped and then restarted. One thing to note about this, you will not see disrupted connectivity for virtual machines that are running on this particular host. However, you may see from a vCenter, vSphere client perspective, that host go into a state of appearing to be disconnected at least for a few seconds. After the management services have correctly restarted, vCenter will reestablish connectivity with that particular ESXi host. This command is a great command for general troubleshooting, especially for a host that's not responding from a management perspective or if you have certain tasks that you need to kill that are long running. The next command is one that you may not realize that you can actually access from the command line, and that is the direct console user interface. You can actually access the DC UI from a command line. In fact, if I go to the command line and simply enter the command DC UI, you will see a very familiar interface, albeit in black and white or grayscale. We can here use all of the same keystrokes, F2, F12. We can log into the host as we would if we were at the console. And we have all of the same menu options that we would have if we physically walk up to a VMware console. So definitely one to keep in mind. If you're familiar with the DC UI interface and want to have access to this management interface, you can do that remotely. The next essential ESXi command is one that allows us to place our ESXi host into maintenance mode from the command line. And it's a simple process. And that command is ESXCLI system maintenance mode set enable true. And if we execute this command, we will see the command execute. And if we check in our vSphere client, we can see that this host indeed has been placed into maintenance mode. However, if we want to verify maintenance mode from the command line, we can also do that with the ESXCLI system maintenance mode get command. And if we run that command, we can see that maintenance mode shows to be enabled. The next command is one that I have highlighted in previous videos, and it's an ESXCLI command that allows us to upgrade our ESXi host to a particular version from the command line. I have this command pasted into the command line. I'm actually not going to run this command on this particular host as I want it to stay at the version that I'm at. As you can see, it's a simple command of ESXCLI for your profile update. We're pulling this directly from VMware. We're telling it which software profile that we want to apply to this particular ESXi server. So this ESXCLI software profile update command is an essential command that allows you to upgrade standalone hosts, for instance, to a particular ESXi version. Last but not least, if you're running a VMFS5 data store, it doesn't have the built-in capability to automatically unmask thin provision block that may have been provisioned and deleted. VMFS6 has that automatic capability built in. All is not lost. If you're running a VMFS5 data store, you can actually unmap thin provision blocks directly from the command line. And that command to do that is the ESXCLI storage VMFS unmap dash U command. After the dash U, you would paste in the unique identifier for your VMFS data store. After you paste in that identifier, you can run this command and it will unmap those thin provision blocks. And the great thing about this is you can do this while the data store is online, while you have virtual machines running on the data store. So keep that in mind. If you're on a VMFS5 legacy data store, this is a great command, especially if you need to reclaim space from thin provision blocks. What do you think about this list of my top ESXi CLI commands that you can use in your environment? I have used these commands over the years and they have constantly proven extremely helpful in troubleshooting and configuring and information gathering. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do hit like and do subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you guys soon.